<laughs> All right. Hey, welcome to another episode of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and today we're going to be talking about my collection. Specifically, we're going to be talking about uh, G.I. Joe Figure Subscription Service 6.0. Uh, and so that came out um, the tail end of 2017 and the beginning of 2018. So there were eight figure subscription services from the G.I. Joe Collectors Club in total. I have already done videos for the first five. So we'll do six today and uh, I'll hopefully post videos for seven and eight very soon. So just like with all the other subscription services, there's 12 figures. They're shipped to you in pairs uh, over the course of six months. And uh, then in the final shipment, there's a 13th mystery figure. So I will take a look at all 13 figures here today. So without further ado, I will put Casey down and we'll take a look at those figures. So in the first shipment of Figure Subscription Service 6, we got Hardtop version 3. So this is based on the 1987 original. So we have that kind of baby blue outfit with uh, the white uh, web gear and white helmet. So this was the first hardtop in the modern era. Both the other figures were in the vintage line. And this is my first version of hardtop. The, uh, the vintage figure actually was one of the two figures that came with the Defiant Space Shuttle which uh, next to the aircraft carrier was the biggest and most expensive playset um, for G.I. Joe in the vintage line. And we didn't have that, unfortunately. So yeah, if you didn't have the spaceship, it was kind of hard to get these figures. So it's kind of cool to finally have a version of Hardtop. And I think he turned out pretty good. He's relatively uh, faithful to the original design. Now his uh, body there is made of mixed parts, but the head, if you've watched my other videos, you might recognize as a reuse of the toll booth head. So this was a brand new head that we got in figure subscription service two, I think it was. So again, I always wish these original characters, like they had unique heads, but in this case, it makes sense to reuse the toll booth head here on, uh, on hardtop because the vintage helmet looked uh, pretty much like our hard hat. This is a pretty close, pretty close representation. And uh, yeah, it works pretty well for him. This head was only reused this one time, so it's not like we have it a whole bunch of times on the shelf. And whenever the club invests the money in creating a new head like this, they like to get a little bit more bang for their buck, as you'll see as this video goes on. So it's not a surprise that they reuse this head, and again, it makes perfect sense here. Otherwise, uh, he's got some cool accessories. As he was, uh, I don't have his file card in front of me to tell you exactly what his military specialty was, he was not the uh, the astronaut. He was more like the engineer or the mechanic or whatnot. So you'll see here he's got a, a wrench and a briefcase, which uh, I don't think opens. I can't recall. But anyway, yeah. So that is hardtop. So along with hardtop, we also got crosshair version four. So this is the G.I. Joe Sniper Crosshair. Lots of cool little accessories on there. The knife and the canteen and the pistol. Got a removable hat. And this accessory here is kind of neat. His, his case definitely does open up. And I'll try not to lose everything here. Don't, and I lost everything. But yeah, you'll see he has a sniper rifle in there, which he can assemble. So there's some various parts that snap on there. The scope and the clip, a uh, little tripod. So yeah, a pretty cool case. Uh, he had additional accessories as well, like a camouflage suit. Um, made out of cloth, but uh, I've got that all tucked away right now. So this was a pretty cool figure. I was excited about Crosshair. A lot of people maybe weren't, because Crosshair was not a character from the vintage line. Crosshair was actually introduced in the early to mid 2000s during what is known as the New Sculpt era, when they introduced uh, a bunch of new characters, and uh, most of them weren't really featured in any media 
So they don't have the fan following since they weren't in comic books and cartoons and all that stuff. But I really liked a lot of the new characters introduced there. And Crosshair was one of the coolest figures from the New Sculpt era, in my opinion. So it's pretty cool that we got him here in the modern era. And this figure looks really good. Now when the club first previewed this and showed us the prototype, they gave us a different vest. It was much smaller and uh, some people complained. And this is another one of those instances similar to Salvo in uh, one of the prior figure subscription services where the club actually went back and changed it based on all the feedback they were receiving. So there's no new uh, parts here with Crosshair. The head is a reuse of a dusty head. And you've probably heard me mention in a few videos that they reuse dusty heads a lot. But the head reused here is not the dusty head that has been reused several times. The dusty head I'm usually talking about is the one that came originally on the pursuit of Cobra Dusty and then was reused a bunch of times for uh, Spearhead and uh, Bullhorn and other characters. This dusty head is actually this one that came from the very first dusty in the modern era. So you can't really immediately tell they're the same head because Dusty's got all that face camo there and everything. But again, it's a good uh, kind of general head, not very distinct, no really distinguishing features, pretty simple haircut. And yeah, it, it works for uh, reuse. This is the, the kind of head that's good to reuse if they're, if they're going to do it, then they might as well use heads like this. So yeah, I think Crosshair looks really good and he looks like a, a unique character on my shelf as he doesn't immediately look like a, a clone of Dusty. So yeah, that's Crosshairs. And in the second shipment, we got Captain Skip, and this is version one. We've never received this character in the vintage line. So as you can tell by the flag, he is a Brit. Now he's actually based on a uh, Zed Force, uh, an Action Force character uh, from the early 80s. So in the UK, um, there was a toy line, Action Force, which was originally five points of articulation, very simple figures, but then they later um, reused Hasbro's molds for vintage G.I. Joe's and just kind of absorbed them into the Action Force brand. So G.I. Joe overseas was known as Action Force, um, even though a lot of the figures were the exact same. But the, the Captain Skip in the Action Force line was before they started using the Hasbro molds. So there is a Captain Skip over there and he was just five points of articulation like an old Star Wars figure. So that's kind of a cool obscure character for the club to dip into to give us here. And uh, like all the Action Force figures they've given us, like uh, Coral and TNT from my past videos, he's got this silver base. Oh, they've gone a step further here though to give him the, the flag, which is pretty cool. And as far as his uh, deco goes, it's pretty cool because it matches up really well with Jammer, who was another uh, Action Force figure they gave us in a uh, past figure subscription service. So you see the camo is consistent, the uniforms, even the red beret. So yeah, as far as uh, parts go, he's a mixture of parts. The head is not new, but we haven't seen it too many times before. It was originally seen on this movie figure, Sergeant Stone, from the Rise of Cobra movie line. Now, Sergeant Stone was a character that was played by Brendan Fraser in just like a small cameo role. This head clearly, I don't think they even tried to make it look like Brendan Fraser, which is fine with me. But anyway, that's the head that they reused here for Skip. And based on the way they, they painted it, different hair color, uh, the eyes are more detailed on Skip, I think, darker skin tone, but they look like different guys. And again, it's a pretty generic head, so yeah, head pops up. Or does this not? I was thinking his helmet was his hat was removable, but I guess it's not. But anyway, yeah, it's a good hit. And Captain Skip, pretty cool. So along with Captain Skip, we also get Dojo version two. So this is based on the 1992 original figure. So this is the first version of Dojo in the modern era. And so Dojo was a member of Ninja Force. Um, I didn't really care for Ninja Force when I was a kid. I didn't really have them because I'd stopped buying Joes by the time they came out in the 90s. But I know a lot of collectors 
are big fans and they were really hoping to see all these figures get made and they eventually did get them all done so yeah a lot of people were excited about this character as far as uh uniqueness goes he's pretty cool and he doesn't look like anybody else on the shelf i like him quite a bit even though uh you know he's kind of stupid but sometimes the stupid ones are kind of fun now the head here as i mentioned the club likes to get most uh like a lot of bang for their buck so when we saw this head here Fans immediately assumed that it was going to be reused probably in the next figure subscription service to be reused as Headman because the face, even though it's pretty good and looks like Dojo, it also looks a lot like Headman. It's like they kind of morphed the two into one. And Headman, he was like a, a drug dealer villain in the vintage line. So all they would need to do was put a little fedora on him there, paint his mask black as, uh, yeah, Headman had the little domino mask and he had the ponytail. So yeah, this would have been a great headman. Unfortunately, that never came to be. Um, I've heard that there were plans to do that, but it might have been because of the drug association or something. But uh, yeah, it never happened. So it's too bad, because I probably would have preferred headman in his zoot suit and fedora as opposed to dojo. But regardless, dojo's fine. He's a, new char a unique character, and I always like getting new characters rather than just repaints the characters I already have. And as you can see, he's got some cool weapons there. He probably came with a bunch more that I don't have displayed here. But, uh, yeah. That's Dojo. So in the third shipment, we got Rampart version 2. So this is based on the original 1990 figure. So this is only the second version of Rampart we've ever gotten. And I was really excited to get Rampart. He was very high on my want list. And uh, I know I've mentioned a few times, every time I review one of these G.I. Joes, it's based on a figure from 92, 93, 94, and there were a lot of them. Um, I just don't have the nostalgic ties to those characters because I'd stopped collecting G.I. Joes at that point in my youth. But Rampart, the original came out in 1990, and he holds the distinction of being the very last G.I. Joe I bought as a child, or received as a child, probably more real realistically. And looking back on it, I don't know why he was the last one. Like, I know I was kind of grown out of it, and they were maybe already getting into, you know, a lot of repaints and ninjas and other things. But uh, I really liked Rampart. He was a great-looking figure. He was unique, but he was also military. He didn't look crazy colorful or anything. And uh, I remember playing with him a lot as a kid, so it's not like... I got him and then I just didn't play with my toys anymore. So I really am kind of surprised that uh, he was the last G.I. Joe that I had. But he was, and I liked him a lot. So yeah, very happy to get a modern era version of him. Now, uh, the head is a reuse of Blocker. So Blocker is a member of Battle Force 2000. And uh, the club put out a box set of these guys. Uh, is part of their uh, convention set a couple of years prior. And they made new heads for most members of Battle Force uh, 2000. And all of those new heads that they cast for that box set, they reused for this figure subscription service. So yeah, this is the first one you're going to see. So this is Blocker. And I really didn't like this head on Blocker, mostly because they forgot to give him eyebrows. And so he looks kind of weird and alien. But not only did they give Rampart eyebrows... But they gave him goggles, and uh, that really helps distinguish him from Blocker. And uh, yeah, I think it looks a lot better here. So yeah, he's not 100% accurate to the vintage figure. But uh, as far as being made of all reused parts, I think he, he looks great. And he is a, a highlight of this figure subscription service for me. So along with Rampart in shipment number three, we also get the female Cobra Officer. And this specifically is the Night Stalker Commander. So the Night Stalkers were a group of female troopers um, that the club created um, for our 2007 convention set. And so it contained, I want to say maybe six female Cobra Troopers. They all had different color hair. But they were all the exact same figure, and they're all wearing these black outfits. So yeah, 
she is pretty cool. Now her head, which um, helmet is removable. Well, the head and really the whole figure is um, based off of this set of figures that the club gave us um, earlier in the year. So earlier in 2017, they gave us a three pack of Cobra Troopers. And so you'll see here the female Cobra Troopers. This is just one of them. But they were all the same other than the uh, the hair color. So this is the one with black hair. And yeah, she came out really great. So it was really cool to add a whole squad of female troopers. And uh, Hasbro themselves actually gave us a officer for these blue female Cobra Troopers. As part of their uh, 50th anniversary line, we got a female officer in blue with the silver Cobra emblem. So for this, they gave us another officer of the Night Stalkers, which makes sense because also uh, in 2018, they replicated this same three pack, except they gave us a three pack of Night Stalkers. So the same characters that painted in black to match up with this character. So the three troopers all have the red Cobra emblem to designate them as troopers as opposed to officers. And again, they all just had different color hair. This one here had a different uh, skin tone. So yeah, we've got this officer here to lead our little squad of three Night Stalkers. And so yeah, it's a pretty cool nod to the 2007 set. So in the fourth shipment, we got Sub-Zero version three. And this is based on the uh, 1990 original figure. And I'm having a really hard time getting him to stay on the stand because he has these snowshoes and the pegs on them aren't very deep. So yeah, he tends to topple over. Plus he's got this kind of heavy backpack on. So yeah, when I display him on my shelf, he's usually in the back of the shelf leaning up against the wall. So yeah, this is a pretty successful uh, Sub-Zero. Um, the original figure from uh, 1990, I always thought was kind of silly looking. He had this big puffy hood on with just his little face poking through. And this guy similarly looks a little overly bundled up, but I think it's, you know, it's accurate to the vintage figure. And the, uh, the paint scheme, again, I don't know, it's something about it looks kind of cute, I guess, with just the baby blue and the white. Not necessarily very military, but again, it's accurate. So for any of those like major Sub-Zero fans, this was probably a pretty uh, satisfying toy to get. This is the first time we're getting this character in the modern era. So again, I'm happy about that. Now, uh, as far as the head sculpt in there, it's not my favorite choice, but considering what uh, their other options might have been, uh, I don't know, it's, it's fine, especially because Sub-Zero is not one of my favorite characters, but... Um, let me see, where's my comparison guy here? Yeah, so here we go. So you'll see the uh, Sub-Zero head is a reuse of Low Light's head because he's got that little knit cap, which works well as a little toque for Sub-Zero to wear. I just took off the, uh, the goggles here. So Sub-Zero, if uh, memory serves, he was, uh, he was either Asian or he was an Eskimo. Um, I believe I haven't seen much of uh, he was featured in the cartoons put out by Deke um, which again was kind of after my time I don't even know if that aired up here in Canada I didn't watch those episodes, those shows until years later but uh, yeah I think what from what I can recall from those episodes I think he might have been Asian or something so in that regard this might not be the best head choice and if he was an Eskimo they might have wanted to reuse Quinn the Eskimos face um, but I might be totally wrong about that. Either way, it's not a bad figure. He's got some cool accessories. I wish he stood up a little bit better. But uh, yeah, that's Sub-Zero. And along with Sub-Zero, we got Guillotine version 2. So this is based on the 2006 Guillotine figure. So he was introduced in the new sculpt era of the uh, mid-2000s. And Guillotine is a member of the Plague. So you may have heard me mention that on here before. Kind of a cool sword with a skull on. So the Plague, in the comic book by Devil's Due, was a group of 13 elite Cobra characters taken from all the different ranks. Guillotine, I believe, was a former eel. 
Um, and they were kind of assembled to act as a counter team to the original 13 Joes. So they were supposed to be kind of the best of the best. And they all wore black outfits. And uh, yeah, it was a cool idea in the comic books. And I really wanted to get figures of those characters, but it never really panned out. But we've, we've got a few of them over the years. So Blackout, for example, who was in the first figure subscription service, was a member. Uh, we got Munisha in a later wave, which I'll show you in uh, figure subscription service 8. And uh, yeah, a couple other characters sprinkled throughout too. But Guillotine, he was the leader of the plague, so he's a really cool character to get. So, and his mask is removable. And he actually had a brand new head sculpt, which actually thought was kind of a weird choice because his head is similar enough to gung-ho or Rakondo or roadblock they could use a lot of those heads um especially since he wears a mask and a lot of people will probably display him like i do with the mask on but they probably could have spent their money giving a new head to somebody like hardtop or sub-zero instead of this guy but no matter i'm always happy to get a new head sculpt and yeah this is a good one now uh, as far as his gear goes because he is a former Cobra Eel, he's got this kind of scary looking scuba mask. Now, I don't know how practical it is for him to be going swimming in this knit turtleneck sleeveless sweater and his jeans and combat boots and whatnot, but uh, still, it's a pretty cool look and cool accessories. And overall, yeah, I'm pretty happy with Guillotine. So in the fifth shipment, we got Worms version 2. So this is based on the 1988 original Worms. And so there's no new parts really for this figure. The body is pretty much entirely the same body we get on General Mayhem. So the kind of pantaloons and the boots and the long gloves and of course the the jacket adorned with medals. But uh, yeah, it's a good body to use for worms because uh, the 88 worms, or sorry, 87 worms, was uh, an interesting choice in that he was just supposed to be uh, kind of a generic vehicle driver. He drove the Cobra Maggot. But uh, yeah, the original toy did have all these uh, medals and stuff on his jacket, which kind of made it seem like maybe he was a higher ranking officer. And so, yeah, they've replicated that pretty good by using the General Mayhem jacket there. And the original one did have a removable helmet. Now, this helmet, we've never seen this in the modern line, but it looks to be just uh, maybe a bit of a reworking of the vintage helmet. And then he's just got the kind of standard ski mask on underneath, which is accurate to the vintage figure as well. Now, one thing they've done here, which is kind of hard to tell, but I guess to uh, hide the fact that this sculpted jacket would have a a necktie sculpted in there as General Mayhem has they actually put a cloth uh, ascot on him there to match the uh, vintage figure which had a sculpted uh, plastic ascot as part of the mold so yeah it's a neat little addition and I love this figure the one flaw I have with it is with any figure that wears a jacket in the modern line it's pretty obvious that these sleeves of the jacket are not connected, so it looks like he's wearing a weird vest with another jacket underneath. And that really shouldn't be the case, but that's just the way these modern figures are designed. But uh, Worms is a character I really liked. Um, when we were kids, my brother Doug actually had this figure. I didn't. This is the first Worms figure I've ever owned. But we didn't treat these guys as troopers. Um, he was a unique character. And for me, uh, the original Ice Viper, this is the modern version Ice Viper, but the vintage Ice Viper that came out around the same time as the vintage Worms, I think we must have gotten them at the same time, maybe the same Christmas. But we treated them both as unique characters. And these guys were the biggest, baddest guys on our Cobra teams. These guys could take out half the Joe team on their own. And uh, yeah, we just really liked these guys. And they uh, became a really important part of playtime. And for a long time in the modern era here, it didn't seem like we were going to get either of these figures. They gave us kind of a weird version of the Ice Viper as part of the Rise of Cobra line, but it didn't look anything like this. And Worms here, we got him obviously pretty late in the game as the Joe line essentially ended in 2018. So yeah, we just got him under the wire. 
and I'm happy we did. So I can finally display modern versions of these two favorites of ours on my shelf together. Now along with Worms, we got Verona version 1, or you could call her Dana version 4, because uh, this, uh, even though they call her Verona here, this is a character that was already established whose name is Dana, and we did get a version of her earlier in the modern era line as part of the October Guard box set. And so they actually do have the same head sculpt, um, but she's got uh, just a different body. Because in the comic books, again, published by Devil's Do, Dana, who was a longtime member of the October Guard, which is the Russian equivalent of the G.I. Joe team, actually joined G.I. Joe and took on the codename Verona, and this was the outfit she wore in the comics by Devil's Do. So yeah, I was uh, pretty happy with this figure. I think it's a very nice head sculpt, and I think this... Uh, body they put together works really well it's it looks pretty accurate to the the comic book um i won't go into too much depth with her because i actually did a solo review of this one figure in another video just when i was kind of practicing uh my figure reviews and i just kind of grabbed her at random not realizing i would do a figure subscription service review just a couple of weeks later but um yeah the one downside to this figure is a little bit is uh this one was highly sought after she's very expensive on the secondary market so the fact that they gave us a second version of her it's it's good for the fans that wanted one but couldn't afford this one but for those of us who had this one she brings down the, val the value of this one maybe a little bit as she's no longer as important to your collection if you can track this one down but yeah overall a nice figure so in the sixth and final shipment of figure subscription service six we got Ghost Rider version 2. And you'll see here, like uh, Worms, he's actually got a cloth scarf. So again, you don't see that kind of stuff very often in the Joe line, so it's kind of cool that they gave him that. So Ghost Rider version 1 was originally released in 1988, and he was the pilot that came with the Phantom X-19 uh, stealth fighter. And that was a vehicle I never had as a kid, um, so I never had the original Ghost Rider figure. And now you'll see here, his uh, display base just says Jonas XXXXS Jeffries. Now, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but you know they named this guy Ghost Rider, and uh, as you're aware, Marvel already has a character named Ghost Rider, you know, the guy with the flaming skull, who's very well known. So it seemed like as soon as they named this guy uh, Ghost Rider, when uh, they had to introduce this character into the comic books published by Marvel at the time back in the 80s I don't know if they just didn't want to use the same name uh, or if, there, if it was a legal thing but Larry Hama the writer of the comic book just kind of worked it in that it was kind of this guy's gimmick that nobody could remember his name for whatever reason so every time he appeared in the comic book everybody always called him hey what's his name or what's his face and that sort of stuff so it was a running gag that they couldn't remember his name and so they've kind of taken that and ran with it here on the display base and took his uh, code name off. Again, probably more for legal reasons now than anything, but uh, we all know that this is Ghost Rider. And even though he's not a character that I necessarily felt I needed, I think this one came out pretty good. And as far as his head sculpt goes, so it is a reuse of the uh, blaster head from the same Battle Force 2000 box set that uh, Blocker had. So Blocker had the head that Rampart reused. And now uh, Blaster's got the head that Ghost Rider is using. And similar to uh, Rampart and, uh, and Blocker, they added a set of goggles to the helmet, which uh, I think helps a lot so they don't look necessarily identical. But these guys look a little more similar than the other guys. Although I suppose you could probably, hmm, I don't know if it's possible that you can actually get these goggles on over his eyes. Maybe if you popped his head off and put them on from the bottom, I suppose that would work. But uh, I kind of like them displayed up there. But if I put them on his face, it would probably help to make these guys look a little different. But uh, yeah, I think uh, Ghost Rider can do it pretty cool. And along with Ghost Rider, we got Windmill version 2. So like Ghost Rider... The original windmill came out in 1988, and uh, yeah, he was also a pilot. He came with the X-Wing Chopper, another vehicle I didn't own as a kid. 
I was already uh, kind of getting out of G.I. Joe a little bit near the end of the 80s, and so I really wasn't into buying the vehicles that were kind of expensive. I was just buying the figures at the time. So I don't have many vehicle drivers from the, the later years. Anyway, so yeah, so this is Windmill. The first version of him we've gotten since that 88 original. And like uh, Rampart and Ghost Rider, Windmill reuses a head from the Battle Force 2000 box set. So you'll see here he's reusing Avalanche's head. Now Avalanche was a toy I really liked as a kid. And so I was pretty happy with, uh, with this figure when we got him a couple years earlier. Now one thing I thought was kind of interesting about his face sculpt is I think he looks a lot like Kevin Spacey. Which uh, was already a little odd at the time a couple of years ago, but now it's just straight up unfortunate. But yeah, so this figure here, uh, I'll just outright say it, I think it sucks. For one, Windmill is a stupid character. They gave him this helicopter backpack, which we've seen on a few characters before. But considering that he was a helicopter pilot before and they just kind of replicated that by giving him this silly backpack... He's wearing a little jacket that only comes down halfway the length of his torso. The pieces they've used make him really tall. And his colors are just really bland with the solid blue jumpsuit and then the little red jacket. The colors and the build, like the height of him, really make all the bad parts of him really stand out. Like if he was shorter, you wouldn't, might not notice that he's just a big blob of blue. But because he's so tall and his jacket's so short, it's kind of obvious just to how simple looking he is. Uh, you know, the head sculpt, while I like it for Avalanche, I don't necessarily like it for Windmill. Uh, yeah, there's just really not much to like here. I just don't like the character. Uh, and oddly enough, the, the 88 Windmill actually had like a lime green outfit instead of blue. But the, uh, the version of him that came out in India by a company called Fun School actually had more of these colors. So these colors are better. Like, I'm very glad he doesn't have a lime green outfit. But uh, as bad as this figure is, some fans were actually mad that he didn't have the vintage lime green and red outfit. Instead, they gave him this kind of blue and uh, orangey outfit. So I don't really care. Um, I, I prefer this, this deco on him. But... Uh, yeah, if you were a hardcore windmill fan, it's unfortunate that you didn't get the version 1 colors that you were hoping for. But anyway, other than uh, Barricade from a couple figure subscription services ago, I think this is my least favorite uh, figure. Definitely from this subscription, number 6, and probably my second favorite least out of all 8 subscription services. And lastly, along with Ghost Rider and Windmill, the uh, 13th mystery figure from Figure Subscription Service 6 was Tiger Force Roadblock. So this is Roadblock version 26. And it is based on the original Tiger Force Roadblock, which was version 3, and that came out in 1988. Now I'm... Uh, pretty happy to get Tiger Force Roadblock because uh, when Tiger Force came out in the 80s and it was a way for them to release a lot of older figures so newer fans had an opportunity to get them but they released them in a new paint uh, paint deco and so they went with this Tiger Force theme so everybody had tiger stripes. Uh, my brother Doug had more of them. Um, the only two that I had were Tripwire and Roadblock. And in this modern era, they've kind of expanded the Tiger Force line quite a bit. And I've, I've got pretty much all of them. And I really have come to like the Tiger Force subset. But I have a special place in my heart for Roadblock and Tripwire. So those are the two I probably most wanted. And those seem to be the two that we weren't going to get. And now that the Joe line is over, we never did get a Tiger Force Tripwire. And yeah, we just barely uh, got a Tiger Force Roadblock. So yeah, I'm very glad that they selected him as the uh, 13th mystery figure. So, uh, aside from the fact that he's Tiger Force, I just think this is a great Roadblock figure. Because uh, Roadblock is kind of one of the main G.I. Joe characters. So much so that when the 
Modern Era launched in 2007 as part of G.I. Joe's 25th anniversary. Uh, it was originally announced that they were just going to do 25 figures as part of the anniversary and stop after that. It just happened to be successful and they kept going. But the uh, the 25th anniversary line was launched with two five-packs, a five-pack of Joes and a five-pack of Cobras. And Roadblock was selected as one of the five Joes. So obviously Hasbro seems to think he's important to the brand. And this is that Roadblock that came out. And while it's not horrible, uh, I always just, it seemed too small. Roadblock is supposed to be a bigger guy. And one of the great things about this modern, this modern style of figure is that you could, um, not all the figures are the same size, so it gave you an opportunity to make him a little bit bigger. But, uh, yeah, this one just never really did it for me. And his head, I always found, was kind of like, kind of small. And, uh, yeah, so this roadblock was kind of my default roadblock on my shelf for a long time. And I have a few versions of this. They released basically the same figure in a couple different color schemes. And then when G.I. Joe Retaliation, the movie came out, and Dwayne Johnson was cast as Roadblock, we got a bunch of Roadblock figures that look like The Rock. And these figures, some of them are really nice. They've got some really nice sculpted detail. The likeness to The Rock is pretty good. Um, this is just, it's just not my Roadblock. So I'm fine with this as a movie Roadblock. But I still wanted, you know, a classic version of Roadblock for my collection. And even though they released versions of him based on the uh, the cartoons and stuff that had come since, um, they just never quite got it right. And then finally, with this Tiger Force Roadblock, I think they really nailed it. So, again, I was kind of surprised they gave us a new head. I kind of thought maybe we would just get this figure repainted in Tiger Colors. But they gave us a brand new head sculpt here. And just proportion wise, it just looks a lot better. It's got a, just a, a good expression on his face. The helmet fits him nice. I just like everything about it. And then he does have a much bigger body. So, you know, when you compare him to, well, to another Joe here. You can really see the size of Roadblock. So it would have been nice um, if they kept making Joe figures, if it, things hadn't wrapped up, because what I and a lot of other fans would have liked is to see this exact build get repainted in these colors. Because this is the, you know, Roadblock's original look. This is what most people prefer. And it would have been really nice to get this figure with this design. But Either way, I do have Roadblock with this with this deco right here, and I do have all those other versions that look like The Rock. Um, so it's not uh, not something I necessarily needed. It just would have been nice to have. But yeah, as far as mystery figures go, I thought this one turned out really well. He's got some nice accessories, and the build is just really successful. So yeah, that's Roadblock, and that's Figure Subscription Service 6. All right, so that's mine and Casey's review of Figure Subscription Service 6.0 from the G.I. Joe Collectors Club. So uh, if you liked the video, please uh, like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, leave those below. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode.